Hi, good morning. My name's Will Golden. I'm one of the um, trustees and directors and um, one of the original founding members of the organisation Bridge End Farmhouse, um, which is based here in South East Edinburgh. Um, 500 years ago on this land, there stood a chapel which was built for the soul's health of King James III and IV. 100 years ago on this land, the Binnies ran a farm, a dairy farm and a piggery which distributed meat and milk all across Edinburgh, Leith and Dumfrieshire. Fifty years ago on this land, the Darlings, renting it from the Millers, ran a farm where they would grow veg, crops, barley, hay and had grazing cattle. Twenty years ago on this land, those farmers left and City of Edinburgh Council, through a compulsory purchase, took over the farm and converted the land into Craig Miller Country Park. Ten years ago, 50 people from the local area met in the old farm barn to discuss how to save this farmhouse from dereliction. Six years ago on this land, just before Christmas, a for sale sign went up and within eight weeks, a community group with no money and no experience pulled together a bid to ask to transfer this land into community ownership for free. And two and a half years ago, those owners from past, present and future, the Binnies and the family of them who had worked that land over a hundred years ago, the Darlings who had worked that land for over 35 years, family members of the old farm workers and hundreds of volunteers who had been developing and growing that land for the last five years, came together to celebrate the opening of a new community hub at the renovated Bridge End Farmhouse, which now belongs to this community and is collectively owned by 405 shared owners. I'm gonna tell you the story about how that community ownership came to be and some of the successes and challenges along the way. So this here is Bridge End Farmhouse, which is in South East Edinburgh, looking out onto Arthur's Sea. Our motto at Bridge End Farmhouse is to create a place where people can learn, work and grow together for a flourishing community and place. So through the centre, we hope to achieve social, economic and environmental justice through that work and through a diverse and democratic learning community. Here it is now, Bridge and Farmer sits at the entrance and as a gateway to Craig Miller Castle Park. Here you see a council organic allotment site right next to us, the cemetery and one of the biggest public green spaces in Edinburgh behind us. And this is in between three densely populated housing schemes, Craig Miller, Inch and Morden, each with their own history of fantastic community spirit, but also experiencing the impacts that social inequalities can bring to an area. And by sitting in between there, we hoped that we could help to bring together people from these communities, utilize that green space and develop a new center for communities to develop together. Bridge End Farmhouse has a rich cultural history in the area. It's existed there for hundreds of years, and here we see it over a hundred years ago, looking south down the old Dalkeith Road. When those housing schemes started to be built, the farm was still working, and people have fond memories of it at the heart of this little community at Bridge End. And now it still exists there today. This was it just 20 years ago, when the Darlings were still there, working it as a farm in the middle of the city. This is how it was left. Still a beautiful building, representative of many similar farmhouses of its time, and with this bothy just across the road too. But 10 years later, that farmhouse had suffered all kinds of vandalism, a fire, um, just a lack of care, and it was going to rack and ruin. And it seemed to be destined for collapse and sale. And that is when a group of people formed a community group called Bridge End Inspiring Growth, BIG, because we had had big hopes for what could happen with it. 
and we started to plan and develop ideas for what could happen. So over the next four to five years, we used a community development approach to engage and consult and work with people from all of those surrounding communities to discuss what Bridge End Farmhouse could be used for, what were the needs, what were the desires within the community, and how could that best meet those. Rather than having all meetings and stakeholder events, we would go out to where people were at, offering things that were of interest. We would maybe, we would go to community centres, care homes, schools, and we would do things like cooking groups, uh, nature photography, uh, natural cosmetics, forest schools. And as part of that, we would discuss what is it that matters to you in your community? What could Bridge End offer to you? And through that, we would be constantly developing and involving the ideas, the designs, and the purposes of what the centre could be used for. So when, in December 2013, the farmhouse was put up for sale by the council, we knew what it could be used for, and we were ready with our plans. All of that work was based, and in, based on inspired by some of the principles of Patrick Geddes, the town planner, educator, botanist, who had lived and worked in Edinburgh over a hundred years ago. One of them being this relationship between place, work, folk, and how that should influence the developments of the city as an organism and the places that we live together, and the ideas of combining heart, head, and hand with all that we do in the activities and the things that we offer together. So we were in the position where Bridge End Farmhouse had been put up for sale and we put in a bid alongside 14 others. The highest bid was for £215,000 to be a private guest house and Edinburgh City Council accepted that and said we will sell it to the highest bidder. And we had to argue this was a matter of public consideration. This needed to go to council committee to be discussed. So finally that was agreed and so it did. It went to the council committee and up we went with our petition and our deputation and it was discussed and the councillors unanimously agreed to overturn that and give the land to Bridge and Farmhouse for a pound if they came back a year later with all the funds raised to renovate it. So here we are celebrating in April 2015, one of the first urban asset transfers in Scotland. So over that year, we continued our community development, we developed our business plan, we worked with our architects who were incredibly supportive and understanding, Malcolm Fraser and Halliday Fraser Monroe. They listened to the community and they developed a sympathetic restoration. So a year later, we went back. We'd now had the offer of a million pounds from the Big Lotteries Growing Community Fa Assets Fund, from the Robertson Trust, and some funding from Historic Environment Scotland. And so we were ready to take it over, renovate it, and had revenue money to start it up. But at this point, the council said that we now needed to pay the full market value, 215,000, which we had not expected, we didn't include within that funding, and we had asked for as an asset transfer. So again, we went through another process of deputation, petitions, and again, the councillors agreed to overturn the recommendations and again, give Bridge and Farmhouse the land and the asset for a pound for us to start developing it. So that was a huge success and therein began the next stage of the journey. Here is the farmhouse, how it looked then. A real state, but we believed we could change this ourselves. So we immediately started working on it. On Sundays, we would meet 11 till three and do the work ourselves. We would start clearing it. We started to advertise this and we would run Wednesday sessions as well. Lots of different people from the community could come together, help out, provide skills, share their knowledge, have lunch together. And this started to develop a much stronger, diverse community. We'd have people from all walks of life coming to help out each week and building a sense of community, addressing isolation, improving physical and mental health whilst developing the site. But when the contractors came to site and we had to move out the farmhouse where we'd been meeting, we needed a new place. So our volunteers decided to build our own shed out of pallets and this became our home for the next year. We would run all of our meetings from here, all of our lunches, we'd even have our festivals out of this building, which became a critical focal point whilst the work was happening. 
But we were really keen that community engagement was kept throughout the whole build and that people were learning about it and continually involved in the changes of the designs as it happened. So we would have various hard hat tours and our contractors, Cornell Building Services and our build manager, Graham Harper, were really supportive of all of that. We also took out any elements of the build that could legally be done by volunteers. So the painting and decorating, the fitting, the, the fixtures like for the office and the kitchen and the cladding for these new workshops that were added. So volunteers learned how to clad, char and clad um, timber larch and put it onto these workshops themselves. They would teach each other and develop these really specialist skills. So much so they ended up showing the joiners that we had how to fit the cladding into the windows themselves. So this is how the farmhouse now looks after all of that work. A renovated farmhouse community hub that's being used by many people today. But that wasn't enough. People thought we needed more. We needed to keep growing and keep developing and projects we could keep doing. We wanted a space outdoors where we could celebrate all of this and have a Cayley. So the volunteers decided let's, let's landscape and clear the land and let's build a space ourselves. And this was it. So people moved and shifted some of the area there, got an old polytunnel, and there we have built our own new outdoor event space. And it's that DIY ethos that has continued throughout the whole project. So after all of this, on March the 24th, 2018, we opened the farmhouse to the public with a huge festival with over a thousand people. And this wasn't without its challenges. And along the way, we'd had various difficulties the legal costs alone, which we were paying for the council, were over 20 grand, which we had not expected. And we had many different challenges where we'd had to, at the last minute, raise £100,000 within six weeks before the lottery money was pulled to ensure that we could meet the rest of the costs. So we had to make various savings. And then finally, we were in the position to be able to do this. So despite it's snowing in March 2018, just the week before this and after we had this beautiful sunny day where we could open and celebrate together. And the farmers, Harry and Doris Darling, the last people to live there in 2000, cut the ribbon for us as we opened it in its new history as a community hub. And that connection to the history has been vital to us. We wanted to learn from the past, keep those memories um, and hold the uses and inform the future development from them. So we spent at least two years sh um, recording and sharing those memories that people had of the farm with people who'd worked there or lived nearby. And here's a picture of um, uh, Chris Binney who had run the farm in 1944 and his grandson who is still involved in one of the members and owners now. So what community are we talking about? Who is that? Well, our area of benefit is in southeast Edinburgh, Craig Miller, Nidri, Inch, Morden, and Gilmerton. And we wanted to create various mechanisms to ensure that local community controlled it. So we transferred from SKIO to become a community benefit society with charitable status so that people that bought shares would be the owners. And we put various things in like that the board must be at least 50% of people from, these local from this local area and no decision can be made unless at least 50% of local people are present at those meetings. So we also worked on clarifying our values. What is it that matters to us? And we did a big exercise around that to show what were our values and how that would drive what we did going forward. The values of welcoming people, power, care and justice, being enabling creativity and belonging. And then in 2018, we carried out a community share issue so that people could buy shares and become co-owners. Through this, we offered various incentives um, and discounts. After five years, people can ask to bring back their share investment. Um, they can get 2% uh, vouchers per year to use at the farmhouse. And as shared owners, they can direct what happens. And with 405 members, we raised over 70 grand in just two months, which has ensured the sustainability and longevity of the revenue for the farmhouse. 
But this wasn't an easy process, and the conversion from a SCIO to a community benefit society was really time consuming, and without the support of Community Share Scotland and DTAS just would not have been possible for a small voluntary organisation, which is what we are. For us, collective control is absolutely essential to what we do, and the point in having community ownership is so that people can influence and control what happens on the land and the places that are within their community. So we've developed various structures to try to support this. We have various subgroups which each meet monthly, a land group, an activities group, a business group, a volunteers forum, and they inform the decisions that the board of trustees and the staff make, as do the members shareholders who own the land and the organisation. Importantly though, we've got to celebrate and we have a lot of celebrations through, to make sure that through all this work, we're keeping connected and, and celebrating all this hard work. So we keep that core to what we do. And here's one of the, at the opening and one of our Easter celebration events. And here again, one of our Kayleys. So what we do now is offer a whole range of activities. These are the new workshop buildings, which Malcolm Fraser had helped us design and add. We have an arts and crafts workshop and activities, a wood workshop and activities in there, bike workshop and repair, outdoor education. We have our kitchen garden, where we're growing veg for the cafe, stone wall restoration, dry stone diking. We have our brilliant community food team who run the cafe and the community meals and all of the food distribution meals and wheels work. We're now building other things on site, including our eco boffy made of straw bale, natural lime render, clay, in one of the old barns, and as long, along with a mindfulness garden, which is being renovated in the old stables. And we have our Bridge End Bike Hub with bamboo bikes, with electric bikes, with trailers, with kids' bikes, and bike repair for people in the community. And then COVID-19. We close like everywhere else. All of this momentum that's been building has been stopped and we don't know what will happen. But within two weeks, a hugely galvanized community comes together, led by Eric, our food support worker, and Lewis from Empty Kitchen's Full Hearts Initiative. And they brought together all of these volunteers keen to help. And they start, like many other places, cooking and delivering meals to people who have been referred that are shielding, isolating, or in poverty. Over that lockdown period, they'd cooked and delivered over 75,000 meals. We also provided 14 bikes to key workers and regular bike mechanics to those key workers and people within our community. We offered daily phone support, activity packs, and various online groups to keep people engaged, like arts, crafts, singing, and gardening. So that facility that we've been developing, that community hub that we've been developing for all these years, could suddenly become a place which could be utilised by everyone who wanted to help and support people in their community in these times of emergency and desperate need. And it created this wonderful sense of connection, of solidarity. And it showed how this could be a catalyst for social change. So where we are now? Well, we don't know what's to come, so we're embarking on a big piece of community action research. We're working with local volunteers to go out and ask people what matters to them in their community, what could make their community better now. So from this, this will inform our work going forward, and we'll keep doing this each year. This will be the way that we work to ensure that we continue to be responsive, and now as a development trust, we understand what it is how, and how we can best utilise this facility for the wider community. A couple of quotes to end from volunteers. It has given me a place to feel welcome, valued, safe and supported when I had none of these things. It's given me a sense of community, family, safety and home when I needed those things most. It has supported me to save my life and go from surviving to thriving. Bridge End is a safe, welcoming environment which you're encouraged to become part of. It has helped boost the confidence of myself and many other local people. It provides a great opportunity for you to learn new skills. Most importantly, it helps you to make new friends and helps to put an end to social isolation. So just to end with a picture of one of our singing group weekends from before all of this, 
and a sense of what it will be like when we can come back together and gather. And just to note the importance that volunteers have had through this process. None of this could have happened without the commitment, the passion and the care that hundreds and hundreds of volunteers have given over that 10 years, as long with the commitment and care that the staff have brought to the, to the table and the support of the partner organisations like DITAS, Community Share Scotland, Community Land Scotland and, and all of our funders who have given us that belief from the National Lottery to Robertson Trust, Historic Scotland, Edinburgh Council, NHS and many others. So I'm excited to be here today. Thank you. It's great to be part of this and to be part of this broader network of development trusts all across Scotland. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and speaking with you this, after, this morning. Thank you.